The Xbox 360 was known for a crap ton of first-person shooters, but what about its two-dimensional games? I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we look at the Xbox 360 in 2D. Second Opinion Games Okay, so some ground rules here. I'm going to try to stay away from 2.5D games, even if they are mostly 2D. But I'm not always going to follow that rule because following rules isn't something I do very well. Also, I know there's a heck of a lot of shmups out there. This is not a end-all be-all list. This is just a few games that I really want to talk about. So first up, we have Crystal Quest. This was on Xbox Live the very first day I got my Xbox 360. And after I downloaded Joust and played a couple games of Halo 3, I tried this one out and was very much underwhelmed. You play as a little ball. This used to be in the arcade when I was a kid, but they did clean up the graphics dramatically. I'd rather be playing pretty much anything other than this. If you're gonna play a game that's sort of this style, how about play Robotron on the Nintendo 64, or maybe even one better, Geometry Wars, which is a heck of a lot better than this. However, it was kind of an important stepping stone in the Xbox Live's life cycle. Black Knight Sword is one of the best games that you could download for your Xbox 360. You are a guy that starts off hanging, so you're like dead. And the whole thing's sort of like a really weird puppet show with really weird enemies. Heck, one of the bosses looks like it's a California raisin and you just stab him with your sword and blood flies out everywhere. The cutscenes in between levels are also fascinating. There's tons of little hidden secrets throughout the game, which makes you want to keep on playing. You pick up real freaking hearts for money. That's currency in this game. This is just gruesome. What type of shop do you spend your hearts at? Well, how about this weird circular eyeball monster who then eats the beating heart and upgrades your character. This whole thing is a messed up fever dream and I love every single second of it. Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extended is also a fever dream. However, this is a one-on-one -on -one fighter and holy crap, do I never understand anything that's going on here. I think it follows Street Fighter rules when you hold back the block, but I'm never really 100% sure because there's too much crazy crap going on. Now, I wish I had an Xbox arcade stick because then maybe I could play this game. I don't think the Xbox 360 controller is very conducive to playing 2D fighting games. And if you want thorough enjoyment out of a 2D fighting game, you need to understand the controls. You also need to spend a crap ton of time with it because the more time you put in, the more rewarding it is. There are just straight on arcade missions here that you can just go in and fight everyone. Or there is a full-fledged story mode which will have you spamming all of the buttons on your controller for five minutes straight to fast forward through all the dialogue just to get to the next fight unless you actually want to see these very mundane cutscenes in between fights. And then you have only one round to progress the story. If you love girls with cat ears and a lot of weird stuff like that, well then you might like this. As well as Blade Kitten. Boy, this little kitty's got some claws and the developers knew what they were going after here. Like 13 year old boys because that's it's really the girl. only type of kids that would really find this girl attractive. However, what you do have is a solid Come game with a highly Come maneuverable up. character. It feels a little bit like Strider as you hack everyone down to size and then you notice it's actually heavy on the puzzle elements here. So just trying to figure out how to clear the level is the main part of the game and they slowly introduce more moves as you play through the game so you don't get too lost from the very start. I think this is one of the better action platformers for the system, even if it does come off very juvenile. Of course, Limbo is a much more mature style game where you play as a little kid trying to work your way through a haunted forest and it's only black and white. You just see the silhouette of your characters and you just try and figure out what's actually in front of you and chances are it's a trap that's gonna kill you. This game is entirely trial and error with a bunch of puzzles just thrown in here and the controls could not be any simpler. One action button, one jump button, which means you can play this whole game with the Nintendo controller. How they managed to shove so much creativity in this incredibly simple gameplay, it just astounds me. And when you die, you don't go too far back, but you still feel like a lot of pain for your death because my God, some of these are downright gruesome. 
Well, as gruesome as he can be for black and white, anyway. DuckTales Remastered is the complete other end of the spectrum here. Bright and colorful, full of cutscenes voiced by the original DuckTales crew. This game was made by Way Forward. I own it for the PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360, and the Wii U. And you better believe I absolutely love this game if I own it for all systems, because the controls are just as simple as that for Limbo, only now you have a pogo sticking duck bouncing around all over the place. The puzzles really aren't there nearly as much much, but the exploring is done twice as well. I love Scrooge McDuck in the entire universe. This is a near perfect game. Yet somehow Splosion Man has blown me away far more than even DuckTales. As you run around this action platformer, blowing yourself up, making you leap from different heights. You also use it as your main weapon to take on enemies, of course, because exploding is just plain awesome. You think your guy would be invincible because he makes himself explode on the regular, but no electricity can kill him. But you do kill a lot of people here. They don't really put up much of a fight at all. You mostly just run up and explode on them, and it is quite hilarious. I absolutely love this game, and if you enjoy puzzle platformers even a little tiny bit, well then you're also going to fall in love with this one. And believe me, it's all 2D here. Even though sometimes the camera shifts just a little bit to make it look 3D, it's definitely a 2D game. Rayman Legends is also a legendary platformer. Of course, this game started its life on the Wii U, which means they really had to tailor it to the Xbox 360 in sort of weird ways, where you could be performing different things on the Wii U tablet. Here, you just slap the B button a whole bunch of times. Does it make the game easier? Yeah. Does it make it more fun? Well, I'm not entirely sure. But if you don't like all those gimmicky controls, well then this version is probably the version you should reach out and play. Rayman's music is always beautiful, and the graphics could not be any better, at least as far as 2D games go. And we gotta give Rayman a bit more love, because they really should be knocking these out of the park like every year. Instead, we have to wait for them few and far between. Just like a good Castlevania game, Castlevania Harmony of Despair is probably my least played Castlevania game because it really wants you to play it with more than one person and I mostly just play with myself. Now, the game is really good. It's set up like a Metroidvania. There's lots of items that you can unlock as you play through the levels of the game, and everything's broke down into little tiny bite-sized chunks. So if you only want to play a little tiny bit, well, then you can, and then jump back into it later, and you just unlock and play through as different characters. But definitely bring a friend, because that's where I believe all the enjoyment is. I wonder what other crazy vampire games I can play now. Oh yeah, Blood Rain Betrayal, a beautiful action platform game that I also have on the Nintendo Switch because again, made by Way Forward, they really know how to make great 2D experiences in a sort of another Metroidvania style game where you unlock different abilities as you play through the game. But you do start off highly maneuverable and you just start mowing everything down. You have to watch out for these crazy sunlight lamps because they will hurt you really fast. And you can just use the regular standard enemies as health regeneration tools because you just jump on them and suck up all their life juices and then slash them down the size. They are not afraid to show a crap ton of blood and I really dig this. Time to see what a 2D Dead Space game looks like. Well, it's um, uh, sort of like a, a puzzle game with a lot of different types of puzzles. Some of them are action-based where you just try to move your line to the finish line before the other lines get there. And other ones are puzzle moving, sending viruses things and moving lasers around. Yeah, this is really not what I expected at all. There is some nice cutscenes in between each level of the game, and the story is more important than the gameplay itself, but I'd rather be playing my games, not watching a movie. So you could probably get all the enjoyment by watching a quick playthrough on YouTube or something, for this one at least. Jumping back to some more gunplay, we have Duke Nukem The Manhattan Project, and this is better than Duke Nukem Forever because the babes you stay here actually stay alive, which gives you a better reason to keep on playing the game, even if all of them look creepy as all heck. 
The controls here are a little wonky as well. They never really feel like they fit the Xbox 360 controller because this was a PC game first and foremost. Matter of fact, you could play a better patch of it with the camera not so zoomed in that makes the game actually playable. Trying to move around like this feels a little rough and you never really know where to go. And because exploring every nook and cranny of this world is something that you should do in order to 100% complete this game, it feels really wrong. It's also 2.5D here, so uh, you know what? Forget about it. No, instead, you should play Serious Sam Double XXL. You know, Serious Sam is sort of a ripoff of Duke Nukem, but boy, did they overdo it with this game. You just mow down tons of enemies. Sometimes you even have to to get out of large pits because, you know, you could jump on the enemy bodies to work your way up and out. But the best part about the game, other than its really janky graphics that somehow managed to make the game work, is the fact that you could stack all of your weapons and have them all out at the freaking same time. And as you play through the game, you unlock more weapons to make your giant gun stacking tower the ultimate destroying of the machine. This is ridiculous, okay? If you wanted a ridiculous run and gun shooter, well then this is the place for you. Is it perfect? No, far from. It'll probably hold your attention for a couple hours at the very least. But if you want the best redneck and shooter that there probably is on the platform, well then definitely check out shoot many robots well you gotta give it to them they're honest of what the game is all about you're just shooting a crap ton of robots picking up their nuts and bolts and using it to upgrade your weapons and to buy more weapons even when you're just destroying massive hordes of robots it never really feels too terrible because you're always improving your skills and you're always upping the ante and the fact that it's not one hit kills in this game really shows that they really knew what they were doing with it because some of the hits just seem to come right out of nowhere. No, there's always checkpoints and always life-refilling abilities right around every corner, so you're never going to feel too overwhelmed and least to the point where you have to feel overwhelmed playing those extra hard levels as you unlocked really badass weapons later on in the game. And the whole time, you play as a dirty redneck on top of it. And let's face it, in a massive robot invasion, rednecks will be the ones to save the Earth. And that's why this is my pick for my favorite 2D game on the Xbox 360. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. I mean, there's no sense in charging straight into battle with those bombs attached to their hands. <laughs> you see. Sir, yes, sir! Outstanding! Now report back to your unit. Ah! Oh, this is gonna be a long day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it because 2D games are some of my favorite games. Probably because they're so simple and easy to pick up and play, but they can offer lots of complex nuances and just really cool puzzle elements that I would not have thought of myself. And also Rednecks in a Contra style game just sounds freaking hilarious to me. I think they need to do that a little bit more often. So what was your favorite 2D game for the Xbox 360? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until later, I will see you again, guys.